here uh, in the background if you hear a tiny human and uh, some puppy dog pals. My apologies, but uh, I got to do this while I'm home. Uh, so today I want to give you some tips and pointers for the Pops Project, uh, some different things to maybe consider and some different techniques you can look at. So we've been learning about automation and panning, and so that's the first thing we're going to look at. So I picked the song you are not doing, uh, but it is Disney-related. It's the Indiana Jones theme. Uh, you would see this at the Indiana Jones ride. So let's listen to the beginning of it, and then we'll get to work showing you how uh, you could change some of the things in yours and some techniques. So I really like that low strings thing right now. And I think it would be a really cool idea uh, to take that instead of having it centered like you can see and pan it left to right. Now, I don't want to just auto pan it left to right because we don't want to have this like seasickness idea of all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Um, if we do that, let's take a listen to that really quick. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So to pan it all the way to one side, I'm going to go ahead, put plus 50. Uh, I'm going to keep that all the way up there for now and then drop it down. So we switch for the second bar. Then I'm going to add my panning uh, dots back in so it moves back for the next time. Uh, I'll move these as close as possible just so that way uh, we have them. It, it is kind of a pain because they want to. Uh, it's very hard to get them like over top of each other. So there we go. Uh, I'll do one more just so we can hear it. And the problem with what I'm doing right now is that it really doesn't have a continuity of sound. We lose a consistent sound from ear to ear, and it sounds empty in the other ear. So let's take a listen. See how it switches back and forth? We almost shut off the other ear. Um, we don't want to lose that sense of space because there is a um, emptiness to that. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to right click, reset automation, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this track. All right. So now that I have this track duplicated, uh, I have a couple different things that I can do. Um, in fact, I'm actually going to get rid of the strings sound first. Um, you know what? Now I'll wait on that. Uh, now that I have two tracks, I'm actually going to add a third for this. All right, so I'm going to duplicate the track one more time. I'm going to make this my low left. All right, I'm going to make this my low right. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and pan that right now uh, all the way to the left. And I'm going to go ahead and pan this one all the way to the right. And I'm going to leave this one in the center, but I'm going to change the volume. I'm going to turn the volume down a lot. Now, what I've done is I've created this track, which I'm not going to touch, but I'm going to call it low center. And that's going to help keep the sound of the strings present the entire time, but in the background. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to two. I'm going to chop up this little chunk here, chop up this little chunk here. So I'm going to get rid of all the other chunks, and I'm going to alternate back and forth. So get rid of here. And so now we have left channel, right channel, left channel, right channel. I hard pan them, meaning all the way to one side. And in measure five is when I'm going to switch to having the middle take over. And I'm actually going to get rid of the left and right by themselves. So let's go ahead and listen to that now. All right, and that trumpet sound is terrible, so we're not even going to worry about that yet. But if you listen now, what you should hear is that by putting something in the middle, all right, we keep that there's a sense of space in the strings, we would call like an echo or a reverb. Uh, we keep that there. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I want to keep it centered after measure five. But if my volume is all the way down here and my left and rights were louder, I'm going to need to change something. And that's going to be my volume automation, the end of measure four. I need to bring that volume up at least back to zero. So that way we don't lose the volume of the strings. So I'm going to bring that as close to zero as I can. There we go. Listen to it one last time. 
Now, I'm actually going to move that automation closer so you don't necessarily notice uh, when that change happens. So let's say we can make 27, so as close as I can get. Uh, there we go. All right, so hopefully... Eh, it's not perfect, but it'll work. All right, the next thing I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a little... I'm going to treat this almost like a remix. So I'm going to get rid of the idea that these are regular strings, and I'm going to switch the instrument. I'm just going to go ahead and write the basses. Uh, let's go pumped up bass. All right, and I'm going to change each of these to pumped up bass now, so that way it has a little bit of a different sound. All right, so now we have pumped up bass, pumped up bass, and I need to change my third one to pumped up bass too. So if you're just going to change the song and add some things to it, you might not need to do this. I recommend it, though, to try. All right, so I have pumped up bass. So now let's take a listen to what this beginning sounds like. All right, so I really, really like that. Um, I think it'd be really cool to add a drum beat behind this. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, I already went kind of through. I found this one NY drill, 140 beats per minute kind of deal. Um, and I think this sounds really cool. That's going to move it over. And if you look, one thing, all of the volume is the same right now. So we're going to have to really be careful of peaking. But so let's add that drum beat. All right. Because I went to loops. I selected a drum beat filter. So that way it only showed me one of 3,700. And then I just started clicking. Here we go. Now. My drum beat is centered, and I think it's a little bit loud. It's going to bring it back a little bit. I actually kind of want to add some hi-hats to this. So uh, I'm going to get a little extra hi-hat going. Or you know what? A really good idea at this point would be, we learned how to use hi-hats. I'm going to add one from the drum machine. All right, so I'm going to add track, drum machine. Uh, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to get rid of section. Oop, didn't want to do that. All right, just going to get rid of section B. I'm going to click on A, all right. Now, the thing I'm going to do is, if I was staring at a drum set, the hi-hat would be coming from the left-hand side. So I'm actually going to take this, and I'm going to take my panning. I don't need to use automated. I'm just going to go ahead and roll that over, let's say, 20 uh, to the left, all right. So when we listen to this now, all right. Let's listen to it in its entirety with everything. Way too loud on the hi-hat. Pull that back. All right, and I almost wonder if I could do a different pattern a little bit. Pattern with this. Uh, it might be too much with the drum beat, but... I don't know. Let's see. All right. Here we go. All right. So there we go. The next thing I could do is I have my main melody here. Uh, the trumpet's pretty terrible. Uh, let's change the instrument. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to find something a little bit more. Uh, hmm, put, let's look at pads. Let's, and let's try cloud fluff. Why not? And that's an interesting sound. All right, so we come back over here. Uh, we hit that now. All right, uh, I'm going to extend my drum beat. I'm going to do copy and paste just because. Expand my hi-hats and uh, make sure that I click on the other track. And now I have Indiana Jones. It is the same Indiana Jones that I downloaded. Uh, that I started with the MIDI file, but I think this sounds very different. And that was the goal. And I would want to keep going with that. So there is some ideas using panning, using volume automation, adding a drum beat, using the drum machine. All of these are tools, changing the instruments. Uh, all these are tools that you guys have learned so far, and I would love to see you incorporate into your own version 
of the song that you have picked. Have fun, guys.